If you use a webcam and want to improve the image quality or make adjustments to it, then uh, stick around because I'm going to tell you a great little utility that you can use to do just that. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alec. Sometimes I just completely lose my train of thought in those little intros. <laughs> so uh, what's this video about? Well, it's just all about a simple utility that you can get for the Mac. I believe it may be available for PC as well, but this is specifically about the Mac version, which basically allows you to tweak the uh, settings that you've got for your webcam, whichever webcam that may be. Now, uh, I'm actually for this video using a Canon EOS 60D that's coming into Ecamm Live, and then there's all sorts of settings that I can change in that. But what I'm talking about today is specifically for uh, webcams and how you can make adjustments so if you're using them for example going straight into zoom or microsoft teams or something like that so let me just first show you what this app is it is called webcam settings very uh, conveniently titled because <laughs> that's exactly what it does it changes the settings of your webcam and it's seven dollars 99 in the mac app store i will of course leave a link in the description uh, now, I should just point out, <laughs> if you go and have a look at the reviews, which is a great place to start when looking for an app, this doesn't actually look that great, uh, 2.4 out of 5. Uh, so. There's a few issues that uh, some people might uh, highlight with this, or maybe when people get the uh, the application and it doesn't work exactly as they say, uh, then rather than evaluating uh, fairly uh, people tend to either give it one star or five stars and so that is why we've got this average uh, figure here the one thing that I should point out about it is that with the current MacBooks and uh, the, in fact I think for the past three years something like that um, the uh, Apple has restricted the access to be able to tweak settings of uh, webcams that are built in so the built-in camera that you might have in your MacBook so as far as I'm aware this doesn't actually work with uh, the built-in cameras that you've got on your MacBook however it will work with external cameras and I think that that is part of the reason why some people have given this the uh, thumbs down <laughs> or the one star review is because of it not working with those particular uh, cameras uh, but for the uh, purpose that it's intended and is capable of uh, controlling, which is uh, an external webcam, uh, for me, I found that it's been quite useful, really. Uh, so let's just go and show you exactly how it works. Now, I've prepared <laughs> a little shot here that has got uh, me, and then it's also got me in my little Logitech webcam here as well. So this is a Logitech C920, uh, one of the most popular, I think, uh, sort of little webcams that you can get to sit on top of your uh, computer. Uh, and so here we've got the actual application itself. Now I should mention that it does actually just sit up in the uh, uh, menu bar as a little icon up here. So you can access it here, the about webcam settings and so on. Uh, and you can switch between different cameras from within this menu up at the uh, up, up at the top. Uh, and uh, then you can come into this uh, webcam settings panel. And that's what I've got open on the screen there. So now what you can see is, uh, if I come out of demo mode for a second, <laughs> there we go. Uh, so this is the actual settings panel of it. Uh, and as you can see, we've got the uh, uh, the camera selected at the top. So this is my uh, Logitech C920, as I mentioned. Uh, but then if you've got multiple cameras, then they would just all appear in there. So you can adjust the settings of uh, different, uh, different cameras. I don't know which camera to look at now. Do I look at this one or do I look at this one? I'll, I'll stay looking at this one because the picture is a bit better on that one. <laughs> uh, but that's the point of this uh, this app after all isn't it to make the picture a little bit better so first of all there is uh, exposure so we've got the uh, the either the basic settings here and we've got advanced settings and some preferences so there is exposure mode now some of the cameras will not allow you to actually change this as is the case with this one uh, but if you could then you could change that one in here uh, so then the next settings down are the brightness and contrast so as you can see I'm adjusting uh, the uh, brightness and contrast of uh, this is just directly adjusting the uh, the webcam and then the uh, the contrast here so we can make some uh, some tweaks to that. We can also change the saturation, uh, so to get the color a bit better, uh, and the sharpness of the image as well. We can also come down to the white balance, and uh, it's not a science this by any stretch. As you can see, it's just basically uh, goes between cool and warm. So I can uh, move this slider down here. So there you go. It's very uh, cool colored. And then if I want to make the 
picture a bit warmer in temperature then we can do that there you can also toggle auto on so it will just do this automatically if i take it off you can see you've got a bit more control over it uh, now what you can do as well is once you have got these settings all set up you can uh, save that as a new profile so for example if you get this set up if you're mobile and you use it in different locations you could have a different profile set up for uh, different locations different lighting conditions and things like that or you may find that uh, for different use cases so for example on zoom compared to making videos or something like that you may want to have a different profile for those and so you can just click on save new profile give it a profile name uh, I'll call it test I've got so many things called test on my computer it's untrue but there you go <laughs> and then you can also uh, delete the profile or update it and uh, have it load this particular profile on start so you can see how that has now got a little star next to it so if I'd created uh, some other profile maybe if I change it and create a new one and I'll call this one uh, test 2 test 2 there we go so now I've got two profiles and if I click on the little drop down list you can see that one of them is has got this little star next to it and that's basically the one that is going to be effectively the default the one that's going to load up on startup if I want to change it to test 2 just click this and then now you can see that this one has the little star which means that will be the default profile which will load on startup so that is some of the basic settings I'm not actually sure which cameras uh, do work with the uh, uh, where well, you can change the exposure settings uh, but certainly with the Logitech C920 it's not an option Next, we'll go into the advanced tab uh, and here you've got a couple of things. So uh, as a default, this is set to off power, uh, power line frequency. So uh, depending on where you are in the world, there'll be a different frequency of, uh, of in, the, in the power uh, cables. And so this can interfere with the camera. And in fact, if I change from 50 hertz, which is where I am to 60, uh, then you can see or rather there is 60 hertz in the, the power lines here. So you can see that this is actually affecting the um, uh, the giving flicker on the camera so if you've got a new camera and you plug it in and you've got this flicker then this is a way to uh, eliminate that and so switching to 50 hertz eliminates that interference you can also just totally disable it as uh, I say that's where it is normally when you first start up the app uh, but then if I click it back on it solves that flickering problem I don't have an option for auto uh, but presumably for some cameras then this would be uh, an option Next is a uh, backlight uh, compensation and uh, this again is uh, not something that I'm using at the moment because uh, I don't have any backlight but if you were in front of a window and you had a bright light behind you uh, then you may want to toggle this one off to uh, make it you uh, stand out more from the background. Finally, we've got uh, this section here with some control. So there is uh, an autofocus already on, on this camera, obviously. Uh, oh, I say obviously, but <laughs> there is an autofocus on the Logitech C920. But if you want, you can override that by toggling this one off. So now we've turned off the uh, autofocus and now I can actually just change the focus uh, manually by moving this slider. So uh, perhaps if you were gonna be using this uh, camera as I do actually for some top-down shots sometimes. So when I've done uh, demo, and things like that and there's a top-down shot it's actually this camera uh, so uh, if you have issues with things going in and out of focus this is quite a handy little feature that you can just have it constantly focused on the desk for example uh, that being a, a little example but uh, that is just uh, one other option you've got there is to uh, toggle on and off the autofocus <laughs> next down here we've got a zoom so uh, if you uh, want to just zoom into crop from the from the camera obviously you can do that in a lot of applications uh, but if you just want to do it from the camera itself then you do have a zoom function it's not entirely linear I've got to say I'm not sure exactly uh, how uh, how that's figured out but uh, it's, it seems like it doesn't have a a sort of graduated zoom from one end to the other I don't know if that's a limitation of the camera or not that the zone it can only do it in uh, certain increments I'm not entirely sure to be honest but it does give you the effect to uh, ability to zoom in slightly uh, and then once you are zoomed in there's also this pan and tilt so you can actually just pan the uh, the image as well so certainly if you're using this with uh, Zoom or Microsoft Teams or something like that it does just mean that you can get your picture adjusted uh, slightly before um, uh, before it actually hits the uh, teams or uh, zoom <laughs> next is a preferences section uh, so here you can have the option to i mentioned that the uh, the the app sits in the menu bar so you can actually hide the menu bar icon if you don't want it to appear up there uh, and then you can also have it read auto settings from the webcam and have that either enabled or disabled or have it uh, 
it incrementally. So it can actually just uh, get the settings, the automatic settings from the webcam and sort of take in those into account. Or you can just turn this off and have it as disabled, which is the default setting, uh, so that basically it's uh, just totally overriding everything that the webcam might be trying to do and you're in total control to it. You can also have it write uh, settings to the webcam as well. So at the moment, everything from the webcam is getting passed through this and this is uh, controlling it. But in some cases, you can actually write the settings to the webcam so that they are sort of embedded in it but again that is something that maybe not is uh, not going to work in for every camera but you can uh, click on the little information button and it will give you a little bit uh, but more information about this so that was a short little video about webcam settings the app and uh, if you do need to uh, update the uh, the image quality or change rather the uh, picture image or things like that that you're getting out of your webcam it is a great way to do it i will leave a link to the uh, app in the description down below it's available in the app store uh, for as i say uh, 7.99 I almost forgot, $7.99. <laughs> and uh, yeah, for me, there are a lot of negative reviews about it in the App Store. But as I say, I think that most of those are driven by people who are expecting it to work with Apple's built-in cameras. And as I say, for the later models, it, it did actually used to work with my webcam in my 2013 MacBook Pro. Um, so it will work with the older models, but I'm not sure of the exact date of the cutoff. But certainly with the new ones, I don't think that it will work with those. But certainly for external webcams, you should be fine. <laughs> if you found this useful, then don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that you get notified the moment I make any new videos. And speaking of new videos, I've got more videos coming up next and I'll leave a list to my app playlist uh, down at the bottom right. Until the next time, have a great day.